Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Um, yes, it's one of those chaotic days today. I hope you're having a, um, a calmer day than um, we have had here today with The Makers. It's all kinds of things happening, um, mostly to do with, um, oh, well, dare I say it, with that naughty, naughty B word and, um, and customs. So um, yes, anyway, I'm trying not to um, think about that for the next hour. Welcome here to making um, doll's hair on um, the heads that we have made in the last um, live stream. And there's lots of varieties that, um, lots of different ways of how you can um, give your doll's hair. This is actually using some of our turmeric curls that we, the hand, hand dyed tea water curls that we sell. Um, they don't have to be a hair color, they can be any color, but isn't that amazing? I actually um, know somebody who's got hair color like that um so this is their sewn on you can um make somewhere um you create you make a, a, a little cap and then you um you put strands of hair on it with a carpet knot which i will show you you can have some very very simple method of uh, putting hair on which is just a little bit of an embroidery um thread running across um the the, the forehead of the hair of the head um there's all kinds of other things. Um, there is one method which I will show you very quickly because, oh, where is he gone? I always try and find dolls. Oh, he's here. He's just sitting here. This one here is um, is sewn or you can needle felt it on and it makes a really dense cover of hair. And that's actually using alpaca tops, believe it or not. But there's a little trick to it, which I will share with you as well. So remember, all of these books are in um, making soft dolls. Um, so, so basically, um, Emma is obviously my backup here uh, behind the scenes, but she's having Wi-Fi problems today. So she's watching it on her phone and um, we might not get all the usual links that we normally get. So I do apologize for that. But um, that's just one of those one of those days. The quality of um, the stream here at my end should be absolutely excellent. I've got very good um, um, streaming quality. But if for whatever reason it's not working at your end, let me know. I'm just going to say hello to a few people here. So we've got Rachel here, um, Rachel and Daniel. Hello both. Um, we've got Fenny and Jane um, and um, Ava is there. Um, Catherine, Diane, Carol, Sandra, um, Dawn. They're all saying hello, basically. Um, and they're calling us fluffy friends, which is always nice. Meg, Meg is there. Uh, another Carol and um and laura is there as well remember to give us um the thumbs up um uh, next as of next tuesday we will be doing um needle felting projects again i know you're all waiting for it um thank you for sticking out the doll making this month it's not everybody's cup of tea but there's lots of useful techniques that you can learn that could apply for um for your needle felting techniques as well which today is definitely one of those days because i will show you um, um an exciting new technique that you can uh, transfer onto needle felting in fact it is needle felting and um I just want to remind everybody that next week on the 1st of March is the changeover of our subscription boxes. It's been a short month and apparently Emma is back online now as well. So we will get um, our links after all. And um, I just show you what the next live stream um, will be um, is, the, is, is the unboxing of, um, of the makers box which is the dragon the magic dragon and um the surprise box and the rainbow fairy so i hope you can tune in for that on the first which um emma will remind me in a minute um i think it's this march is this is this massive big filled up um filled up month where we are unboxing on the first but that's not a Tuesday just remind me Emma just make sure that I do know what I'm saying is right um and so the unboxing will be at 11 o'clock please please make that right I'm pretty certain I'm right and then um the following day which is actually the Tuesday we are going to make an Easter egg so the Easter egg is um the next needle felting tutorial if you um it's a really super super easy project so all you need is a bit of white wool and then lots of nice um, pastel-y um, spring color colors and then you can color in your egg and we're, we're coloring it in as a as a sort of spring or almost summer garden um, theme and so that is at 1 p.m on Tuesday which is, would be the 2nd of March and the 1st of March I was right is 11 a.m for the unboxing of the boxes 
And there's lots of live streams just next month because there's lots of Tuesdays in March. In fact, there are five, I think. So you get um, the standing chicken as well, which hopefully you've bought your pack yet. If not, then um, you have still got time to get it in time. She's quite a fun fun bird. You don't have to make um, a she hen. You can make a he cockerel if you like. And um, um, yeah, she's. I, I really love her. She's she. You can add all kinds of um, features um, with with her eyes being different. You can you could make a cockerel with a, a nicer, more colorful tail. And um, you will we will um, I will teach you how to make these legs as well. So if you're struggling with legs, this is a good a good time to do it. Right. Let's have a look at um, um, adding hair to our dolls um, um, dolls heads and. Oh, not that one. Sorry, sorry. Very close to the camera. <laughs> Do apologize. Anyway, there we are. Got lots of um, empty doll's heads here waiting to receive hair. This one already has got a little bit, so I, I will pick up from that. Um, I don't want to show you the next one yet, even though I'm excited um, to show you. So for the hair here, um, all I have done is, and this is probably the simplest to show you, is just use some embroidery thread. You keep that um, at the full six um, ply. And then um, obviously cut a strand off. Oh yes, I must remember to tell you, I do this first now. Um, there is a competition today again, of course. And this time, um, rather than uh, relying on me co cobbling up some, so, something last minute, we're actually organized. And so the competition is, I just need to find that here now. Uh, that, uh, oh God, so many pages here. Um, oh, come on, Steffi, you know where it is. Um, Competition. There we go. This is the competition today. You're gonna. Oh no 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 no. Yes, this competition is still on as well. This is goes until the end of the month, which is the mini me competition. You can enter your photo of your mini me and and the person who it's supposed to represent on our main page, um, the makers, and um and you can win yourself a fifteen pound gift voucher and a signed copy of the making um dolls book. That's not what I was going to say. So today's competition has disappeared. I cannot believe this. Okay, I'm going to tell you while I'm trying to find it. Um, oh, where the heck is it gone? Oh, yes, there we are. I've got it now. I've got it now. I promise. There. This is what you can win today. You can win yourself a £15 voucher if you tell us the name of your first doll. And... Um, um, yeah, that would be amazing. Just tell us the name of your first doll. I will just say something else before I go on to making the doll's hair. Obviously, if you're watching this live today, that's um, the 23rd of February, um, then the competition doesn't apply to any other date. Um, other than if you're watching this on Thursday, which is um, streamed again on Facebook, then the competition does also apply and you have the same price and the same competition um, question. And um, as I was talking to Emma earlier, I, I, I actually cannot remember the first name of my, um, the, the name of my first doll. I genuinely cannot remember it. it. It's, I had dolls. I know I played with them, but I can't remember what it got me thinking about is that um, I've of, I'm have i still of the generation who played with Barbie doll lots and that's what got me to think well what name were my dolls and my dolls were actually called something like um, Fallon and um, Alexis and um, J.R. Ewing and I remember I used to play out the whole of um, of Dallas and uh, Dynasty uh, with my Barbie dolls um, which is actually thinking back um, sounds really awful because um it's not exactly the best thing to do, you know, the best programs to watch for children with so much um, conspiracy and, um, yes, and deceit and greed and all of that. And I was like happily playing along in my bedroom with um, all these Barbie dolls. And all I will say without going into details, they, they, they used to spend a lot of time in the bedroom as well. And um, I, I don't know how old I was, but it was um, probably quite hilarious. So anyway, let's um, go on to making um, the dolls. Ah, oh, for goodness sake, it's, the, it's so close to the camera. Okay, here we are. This is the bit, um, this is the doll's hair that you can do very easily and it works best if you've got, if you give your doll a hat. So have your hat ready made and then you get an idea of how far and how much you need to cover the areas that will be visible and will kind of represent the hair. 
And then obviously the idea is that the hat gets um, sewn on, so it can't um, it can't come off. That that is quite nice for if you make a doll for a smaller child, like um, this one here, for example. You know the hat's sewn on, it stays on. It's a beautiful um, fabric. This one here is our velour fabric, which is um, is the highest cotton content that you can that we can find in this uh, particular soft fabric. It's a it's a little bit like. Um, Oh, I don't know. I I just it's it's a stretchy fabric, um, but it's really lovely to use for dolls, if, especially if, if you're making a first doll. Where there's another one here, so you can see the hair has just been embroidered on, and um, and even this one here, um, even a simpler doll with um, no facial features or a nose or anything like that. Remember, we've done the heads last time. Um, here too, it's just the hair has been embroidered on, and the hat is uh, firmly sewn onto the head. So that um, that's basically just sort of a little doll. That um, children can carry around but to sew the hair on you need um, you need your embroidery thread and then you need a needle um, looking for another needle now which has has disappeared but this one will do um, and um, obviously thread your embroidery thread onto the needle and then um, Everything that you do, you want to be out of sight. Do it as far back from the head as possible. So just establish your um, thread. Just go in and out a couple of times. And do keep putting that hat on because sometimes we think we know, oh, this is this is where the hair needs to be. And then we realize it can actually be somewhere else entirely as well. So here I've gone sort of a bit um, astray, crisscross and whatnot. Um, you can also just have one um, strand that sort of falls right into the face. And um, so you need to come out a little bit lower than where you've come out before. Um, the main thing is that you remember that anything that happens inside isn't visible and anything that happens on the outside is. So if you're sewing a strand of hair onto there, then make sure that the, the line that you are um, putting on is, is what will be visible. And then you can um, obviously add more here to the side. So it's just it's just how it's quite random. You can do this um, in a really straight line, give it a completely straight fringe, or it could be really wispy and unruly. Um, however, you want to do this, um, that's entirely your design, and that is probably the easiest way to add hair to your doll, especially if you're giving it a hat. It's a it's a really easy way um, to do this, and it looks quite messy when you are. Um, when you're still sort of doing it because whatever is visible here that I'm um, I'm using now to fasten the thread on is not something that will be visible as soon as you've got the hat on and then um, if you have a hat whatever however the hat is you will pull that right obviously what you do first is you sew the head onto the body which we're not covering in these tutorials but if you do want to know how to do this then please get um, the um, making um, soft dolls book I'm just sh sh shoveling that um, shoveling that round a little bit because so the seam is at the back and then you can see that um, there's quite a lot visible here on on the on the on the front of the head but all the nasty horrible stitches from um, making the hair are not are not there at all so that's basically of making um, the very simple embroidered hair and um, I'm just gonna have a quick look at what people are um, telling us about their first doll first dolls names let's have a look if there are um, remember to give us the thumbs up um, on these doll videos we tend to not have as many viewers because we are needle felting business and doll making is a relatively new area but then you know what five years ago needle felting hardly anybody ever heard of it so I'm hoping that we will um, that we will take over the doll making market as well because there is so much value in making dolls in in terms of personal growth therapy um, gifting heirlooms things that will last a lifetime quality and it's it's firmly rooted in tradition of of um, families in well in early 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 days as well right let's have a look so uh oh lots of um, names coming up here um my first doll doll's name was trineke ah oh, that sounds very dutch funny <laughs> trineke 
as you probably pronounce it differently and um, pronounce it the German way. Flotty. Oh, that's such a nice name. We should, if anybody's looking for a doll's name, you might be able to uh, pinch one or the other. Anna, um, Rosie, Queenie. <laughs> that's hilarious. Effie, um, after my mum. Oh, that's only, that's only two letters away from Steffi. Um, oh, it was just simply baby doll. A doll called Humble, says Julie. Um, Faye says, my first doll I made was named Margaret by my daughter. My first and favourite doll was called Emily. Oh, um, I did have a baby. I did have a Barbie doll called J.R. J.R. Ewing. <laughs> I know. And this is in Germany as well. So all, all these um, episodes that I watched, they were all dubbed. <laughs> they were all... They all all these um American nasty characters, they were all speaking German. <laughs> it's quite funny actually. It's funny now to me. At the time I just couldn't wait for the next episode so I could all act it out with my Barbie dolls. Yeah, it was it was and they are, you know, come on, Barbie dolls are perfect for that. They're all like perfect, they've got tiny waists, they all they always look glamorous. I had like lots of high heel shoes for them. It was really, really I was so annoyed if I lost one because you know you couldn't some some of the clothes are so are sold themselves. Um, sometimes they didn't wear any clothes at all. It was yeah, it was quite funny. Um, right. So we have got um, what else? The first doll I can remember naming was called Tracy. Um, my first doll was um, is called Mary. Um, a bride doll I got on my fifth birthday. She's now fifty nine and sits on top of the wardrobe. Oh, that's so nice. You see, you could be making an heirloom that sits on somebody's wardrobe in 50, 60, 70, 80 years. My first doll um, was a hard babe boy doll given to me by my granddad when I was born. Can't remember his name. I then had a doll that was called Susie. She's still in my parents' loft, sat in her high chair. Oh, that's so nice. Well, I tell you um, a funny doll name story of my children. So I think, I can't remember, but anyway, we had a friend and um, she had a doll and um, her she was a slightly older friend to my children and uh, her doll was called Amber and thereafter, everything that we got from um, chickens, dolls, anything was always called Amber. Like, my children just, just couldn't think of another name because that seemed to be the, the universal um, doll name. So everything was called Amber, including the chicken. And um, anyway, that, that was the story. It might not have been that funny, but um, children, sometimes they just, you know, they don't need complicated names. They just take whatever is on offer. Right. Second, um, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to go and do this exciting, exciting head now. So the, um, the one that I, um, that must make sure not to go onto the, onto the uh, wrong thing again, overview. That's it. So the doll that I was showing you is, is Peter doll here. And he has got a really dense cover of hair here. And, um, it's made with alpaca tops. So it's actually this stuff here. There, that's what it's made of. And um, to do to get this particular effect of these really tight curls, especially if you're making a, do a, a boy doll and you want really short hair of, or if you need that sort of really tight curl, um, then you can use um, wool tops. They work really well. It doesn't have to be wool tops. You can also use what's called um, pencil roving. I don't know if you've come across this, but that's 100% wool and it's just... Um, it's not plied, um, so it hasn't been spun. It's exactly like this stuff. It's it's just that it's really, really thin. So you can also needle felt with this. And um, and to do this, I have actually um, started doing one with our rainbow tops. Emma, you will love this. So if you imagine you want to make um, dolls here, and I, I have got, I've started on a doll, but what you need to do is you need to separate the wool in thin strands. Now you can either use a felting needle to fasten the wool on or you can um, sew it on as you go along. Um, if you're um, felting this with a felting needle then go for a coarse or medium needle, definitely not a fine needle. So I'm going to go for a coarse, this is our um, standard core, um, coarse needle, standard standard coarse needle, not core, it's nothing to do with wool and it's um, the white the one that has white on top. All of our needles, as you probably know, have, have got um, a color coding on the top. Now, um, oh, I just need to tell you another story. Sorry, I'm full of stories today. Um, you know, some have, have any of you ever seen these really thick, ginormous, big felting needles? Well, they're not actually bigger. They're just really, really thick and they're a gauge 19. So they're, um, the, the, the needles, the felting needles are um, uh, named according to the wire gauge. So 
um, the smaller the number, the thicker the needle or the wire, and the higher um, the number, say, so a 42 is the finest needle that we do, and it's really, really fine. I, c I can't imagine using anything finer than that. But I used to um, I used to have 19 gauge needles when I had my craft shop and um, I, I bought them by accident to be perfectly honest. I couldn't needle felt to save my life with it. They're just so coarse. And then somebody came in there into costume making and they use it to uh, put hair into a surface. So I don't know what the surface is, but I think it was something like, um, oh, what's that stuff called again? It's like a, it's like a packing material. It's like, it's not polystyrene, but it's the, the thing that, um, oh, there's a word. It will come to me, plastisode, plastisode. They, they put, they use the needle and they stuff literally um, wool or whatever they use for hair into the plastisode and, and this felting needle, this really coarse felting needle is absolutely perfect for it. So that got me thinking that you can actually use a felting needle to do this exact same thing, but with a, on a smaller scale and, um, and if you, um, let me just find this um, overhead camera again. There we go. If you look at started, so if you want to cover the head of this, what you need to do is, and this is also, say you want to give a sheep curly, a curly cover, but you haven't got curls, so you want to give it like a tight looking curl. You can do exactly the same, or a poodle or any sort of animal with tight curls. So you establish the wool first by stabbing it into it. Um, it's extra, extra hard to do this where you've got like a double layer of, um, of the, um, the jersey fabric because obviously that's been sewn together. So you need to be really, um, careful. And, um, what you do is you twizzle your wool. Lots of people didn't, don't know what twizzle, twizzling is. This is twizzling. You basically twist the wool until it twizzles and twizzling means it sort of doubles up and curls up. And when it does that, that bit that you've got here for where you established it, you see it's twizzling. Um, that is what you're fastening on now. So you've got to do this in stages. You lay this out, so it's not fastened on here at all at the moment, but now you just um, stub into the wool and into um, the head and that fastens it on, but it on the surface it remains that really tight um, curl and gives a really dense cover. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. You have to keep twizzling your, um, your wool, which could be um, a bit of a pain. It's a, it's a slow progress, but you get there in the end. And especially when, when it sort of starts twizzling, you can, you can feel it, you can see it. It sort of crinkles up and wants to twist in on itself. And you let it do exactly that. Lay it out where you want to fasten it on, stab it in doesn't actually take very much wool either and um, and that gives a really nice short haircut so where the where the really thick parts are of that um, surface I'm, I'm going really really gently into this and avoiding sort of the the really really resistant parts because you can break your needle and I'm using a coarse needle here so um, you do need the the needle will force its way through, and if you um and the because it's it's thick enough it um it doesn't break. So I definitely wouldn't use this with a fine needle because I think it would just bend um, as you're trying to insert it into into the wool and into the cover. So I'm continuing doing this, and then when you get to the end of your strand, you can felt that in first. This is definitely the fat fat part of the head. The thick part of the head then um, just fasten that on now if you were to sew this in then obviously you sew it on as you go along which is exactly what I've done with this chap here so you can probably just about yeah you can just about see the thread of um, where I've sewn it in you have to just use the same color thread which might be difficult with a rainbow color um, and then just um, just sew it on as you go along and it's a really good way of um, of making a nice dense cover of head especially if you're sort of trying to make short curls it's, it's an absolute um, uh, ideal way to do that so just fasten that on by um, stabbing into the wool and um, I just I will just show you um, just to show you what how it's done. I'm using sort of a, a fairly neutral color, maybe it's sort of like a, a light yellow here. I'll show you how you would sew it on. 
the, with sewing, you have to go over and over and over and over. I mean, best still, you do both. Felt it on and sew it on. That's good. I'm always thinking, having had four children, I'm always thinking of how can I make this as uh, long-lasting as possible and indestructible as possible, which is... Um, I'm, I always used to check everything. If my children didn't break it, it was definitely safe for everybody else. So, um, yeah, they were always the test wherever I was going. If anybody said, do you think that's safe for children? I will just say, just hang on a second. I'll just call my brood. And if they, if it was still in one piece afterwards, then it was safe. So I'm just literally catching some of the wool and uh, pulling it close to the head. And actually the thread sort of disappears into the head. So you shouldn't see too much of it. But it's definitely best to use um, a, a colour that sort of um, fits with your wool. It does disappear into it. And that's how you add. And I, I really love it when um, you don't have to think traditional uh, all the time. You can also be a little bit more adventurous when it comes to um, dolls hair and again you would just um, s start it out by sewing the end in so you might have to go around it takes a lot of um, thread um, doing this it takes probably more thread than actually wool so once you've got the end established then um, twist the rest there we go I hope you're all um, all in one or another way are I don't know, hopefully pleased with the recent um, news. It. I don't know about you, but um, whenever there's an announcement by the government about the next stages of, of um, the pandemic, it, it doesn't matter whether it's good or bad news. It always puts me slightly on edge. And I don't know whether that is just because change is about to happen and it's something else to get used to it again and just adjusting, you know, we're such creatures of, of habit. So we've just got into a routine and in a, into a habit and then things change again. And I don't know whether that is just me because of um, sort of feeling slightly anxious or whether that is just that happens to everybody. So do let me know if, um, if, you, if you feel the same way. That would actually help me to know that I'm... Um, not completely um, unnormal, even though I do know I'm not normal. But um, maybe maybe none of us are normal. So then tell, tell me how you're feeling with all of this. Um, so yeah, so I'm sewing that second lot on. Um, the, so on, oh, and pulled some more off. That needs to be fastened on again. So sewing, um, I, I don't know actually, I, I wouldn't like to say if sewing is, is, um, is firmer than needle felting un unless what has just happened proves it. Um, so this one was felted on, needs to go back on. But it's really fun. I, I meant to bring in a sheep that I've made uh, a few years ago. It's really fun to uh, use this technique on um, covering a surface of maybe something that you uh, need to, um, you know, sort of have a very special uh, um, surface cover. Like, a, like I said, a sheep comes to my mind. It could be a poodle or an alpaca. So any any kind of creature that has this really tight curl um, on top of their um, their bodies and that's basically another way of making the doll's head just to remind you last time we were doing doll's faces and I actually needle felted the eyes on earlier because I, I thought um, we, um, it would be nice to have a doll face looking at you there um, so that is also possible to needle felt little eyes and mouths um, on there but if you are interested in any of this then remember there is a there is already a um, um, a whole hour worth of all of this on um, last week's um, live stream and it's on YouTube and we already streamed that again on Facebook. So um, that basically covers this really sort of dense cover of hair with uh, wool tops. So we've done the embroidered hair and we've done the wool tops and um, I want to show you next how to make um, the hair so that you you can actually add really long strands of hair and you can make different hairstyles with it as well which is um, this doll here so she has got um, it's really dense and you can't see any scalp if you lift her hair so that means you can you can give her a ponytail um, a, children absolutely love it when you can stylize the hair how, how, how many of you have had dolls with really long hair and then um, inevitably they ended up with really short hair 
<laughs> it's happened to me and I, I, all of my children have done it too. You get these, these, mom, can I just cut a little bit off? And it's like, well, if it's off, it's off. You can't put it back on again. And then more and more and more. Tell me if that has happened to you because that seems to be sort of a common trend. But with this one, you can give her a little little um, bunches um, you can even plait the hair and she's got sort of a slightly longer fringe which you could put out of the face with a clip if you wanted to and um, this hair is the is the boucle um, hair um, we do sell the different hair and skin colors um, to hopefully suit as many different type of hair and skin color people as possible um, I'm just having to try and find this there we go so this is this is what um, we do um, different skin colors different hair colors you can also um, dye your own wool obviously so if you um, want to get the natural color we have got that um, hopefully soon in stock if I can persuade the customers that um, everything we're not importing anything other than what it says on the invoice so that's um, something that we are um, we will be stocking, which is the same wool that we've used for this maker's box, February maker's box, which is the, this is the boucle. Um, again, you know, needle felting and doll making isn't actually that far removed. Uh, you can combine bits uh, from, e from either. There is some sewing obviously involved in the doll making, but um, you can um, definitely use your needle felting skills um, if you want to. Right, let's just have another look here on the, on the chat. Uh, Lots of dolls' names. My first doll ever was actually one handmade and gifted to me when I was little. It was such a cute little princess style doll and I called her Princess Sarah. Oh, that's nice. Um, uh, my first doll was called Slippy. I tripped over while carrying her just after I even saw the name stuck. Slippy, oh, that's nice. Uh, my first doll and last doll was called Samantha. Oh, there's, there's never a last doll. There's, you still have time to have a last doll, Laura. Takes takes a lifetime to have a last doll. Um, I'm afraid she was neglected as I was more interested in soft animals. Nothing changed much. Oh, bless. Oh, um, Meg, great. I never had uh, had Barbie dolls, but think they were more popular um, as still going now. Well, I must say, I am not a great... I never bought Barbie dolls for my girls. I've got three girls and I, I, um, I don't know. I just, you know, they're obviously not um, proportional to real people. And I didn't ever want my children to grow up with... I'm thinking that you had to have like um, a tiny, tiny waist, waist and um, tiny, tiny feet and um, whatever else Barbie dolls have got, like ginormous head as well, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, so they don't look anything like that and they don't think they should either, which is good. Um, but yeah, I did. I love my Barbie dolls. I played with them all the time. And um, yeah, I don't, but, but I don't think that they're really very good for young children. So um, Donna says, my first doll was Rosebud. She had a string at the back of her neck and when pulled, she would say different phrases. My name is Rosebud. Mummy, I love you, amongst many others. Um, actually, Emma and I had a conversation about this, all these fancy dolls that you could get. So I had one that um, that you could feed and then um, instantly you had to change the nappy because it was like running through her. And it, it became quite gross because I wouldn't just put water in there. <laughs> I put all kinds of things in there to see what it would look like when it came out at the other end. <laughs> And um, I think I um, can't remember now. Um, did did yours make a noise, Emma? And and now think looking back, they they were actually quite hideous dolls. <laughs> so I don't know. Obviously, we look at it differently when we're children. I love my doll. My parents wouldn't buy me one. They absolutely refused, but my grandmother did because that was my favorite. Well, it was her favorite. Um, Joe says, I'm exactly the same, Steffi. I always feel very anxious when I know it's coming up. I'm shielding and always worried the announcement is going to extend it for me. Oh, okay. I'm not just the only one. I mean, I'm obviously not sh shielding and, and all the rest of it, but it's just that, you know, it's just getting your head around. Oh, what does that mean now for the children? What does that mean for that? What does that mean for that? What does that mean for that? Am I, what am I next to, what I'm meant to be doing next? Uh, Jane says, I'm just the same, Steffi. I'm on the edge the whole day when I know the PM is going to make an announcement. Then afterwards, I have a headache. Oh, God, I'm so glad. I mean, I'm not glad you've got a headache and you feel the same way, but I'm glad I'm not the only one because it really does unsettle me. I, I will be honest. 
Um, I've used the Twizzlers for gills on mushrooms and icicles. Oh, great. There's lots of ideas coming out. Um, Erica says, hi, Steffi and Emma and Makers Funds. Well, also, Erica, I've got some news for you. We finally received Stuart's book. So that will be on its way to you very soon. It only arrived yesterday, so we haven't been hogging it. Um, that happened to all my babies. Oh, Barbies, Barbies, Barbies. Whatever whatever that was, I missed that. But um, Kaylee says, yes, and I used the, to colour my Barbie's hair with felt tips. Oh, I never used to do that. Why did I not do that? Um... I don't know. I did probably just cut the hair off anyway. Um, Donna says, going to have to go. Sorry, didn't stay long. That's quite all right. Don't don't apologize, Donna. Um, Sandra, she's probably not there anymore anyway. Sandra says, who remembers Tressy dolls pull its hair to make it grow? <laughs> okay, I don't know them, but um, never had one, but my friend did. Um, oh, yes, I had one of those. Loved my Tressy. I must say, having not grown up in this country, I missed out on Tressy dolls, obviously. Um, I had a Cindy doll when I was about 10. Um, Boo Boo was mine. Okay, that's enough on dolls' names and doll stories. Let's go back to making um, dolls' hair. And um, I need to go to the overhead camera for this. There we go. So for making the doll's hair, you can use a oh, there's a bell there. You can use a yarn that is is already sort of like has got that sort of um, hairy type of um, um, feel to it and structure. So this is some of the more hair um, yarn that we um, sell for doll's hair. You can also um, knit yourself a jumper, but it'll be almighty itchy that I will tell you. So what I've done is I've, I've made it, I'm already on my second row. This is to all crocheters. Um, um, if you're a really awful crocheter, don't worry. This is the, um, because crocheting with more hair is awful in itself. So if you're an awful crocheter, nobody will see any mistakes you're making because it literally doesn't, doesn't appear. And what I've done is I've made a chain um, that goes roughly from ear to ear. So once you've um, got, you know, make a chain to go from ear to ear. And then you just um, crochet, um, keep putting rows on, on, on top of it. And what I've done is, and it's really not easy to crochet with this mohair. We'll give you that. So um, don't don't think this is going to be, um, well, I don't think it's a fun exercise because you, you'd, you can't hardly, half the time you can't see if you're going into the right place or not. But as I say, it doesn't really matter um, because you're not going to, you won't be able to see that anyway and um and then what I've, I've put one just normal crochet row on top and then you can do half trebles um to speed things up so if you don't know what a half treble is um not that this is a crochet lesson it's basically where you do as if you're doing a treble and then instead of um going through um one and then two you go through all of them at the same time so you it it's a faster it, it grows faster, the rows grow faster, um, but it's not as holy. It hasn't got as many holes in as a as a full treble. And I'm sort of half the time I'm just guessing where I'm going in here, just trying not to um, increase the stitches. That's quite easy to do. You can also knit a cup so that it doesn't have to be... Um, put that yarn on the floor there because it's going in the wrong place. You can also knit a cup... Um, doesn't have to be uh, crocheted if you if you um, feel that knitting works better for you. It's still not nice to knit with because you still have to and and um, and it's almost impossible to undo it. So um, just go for it. Don't um, think too much about it. Um, use a relatively large hook. I don't. I think I could have used a larger one here. Um, what am I using? That is a three and a half. Um, and. Just keep going until, and I'm not going to do this while you're watching because it's going to be so boring. I'm I'm going to um, go to the end of this row and then I, I tell you what you need to do if you're doing this. So you, you're making this to measure, basically, because everybody's head will be slightly different. And when you get to the end of the row, I'll show you what you're doing. Nearly there. I've no idea how many um, stitches there are. I, I just measured it literally against the doll's head. It's going to be quite a thick 
um, cover. If you um, don't want to add long hair, that's fine too, because um, this will really, once you've sewn that onto the head of your doll, it will be it will be a really solid, nice cover as well. So you don't even have to do anything else. So it's um, this is how it looks. It's not meant to look neat. That's not possible without more hair. And what you keep doing is you keep going until these basically until you cover more and more and more and then you end up with a um, um, a rectangle it will definitely be a rectangle that has got that extra bit on there and then you sew that together so that um, the back is sewn together and then you have like almost like a pointy hat but don't worry when once you put it on and you sew that onto the doll the um, that you just sew that pointy bit in and then um, you have a really if you imagine this is already this would be a perfect um, short hair um, cover for the doll if you want to give um, your doll long hair and I, I thought I would use this because even though it's got um, she, um, he's got blonde hair um, there I um, you can see so the cup has been sewn onto the head. You can see that, that underneath here, that's the cup. And then what you do is, you do need a crochet hook for this as well. Um, what you do is, you use woolen strands like that. Okay, so this is this is why it works well with the contrasting. And then you uh, go in with your crochet hook. So you're going into um, a, pick up some of that cup with a crochet hook. Then you go through it um, with your doubled up yarn and then you pull the um, rest of the yarn through that loop that you've made that's a carpet stitch a carpet knot so then and then you've got a strand of hair here it will look weird now because it's a different color but what I need to tell you about this is that if you measure out all of these strands of hair and you start um, covering the dolls and, and they're literally all these individual knots um, you can see you can pull pull them off if you undo the, um, that loop. Um, if you have all the same length of hair all around the head, you end up with a, a doll like this. So it's like a sunshine doll. It's got all the hair sticking out at the same um, direction, which is, is lovely, but there's not much you can do with it. It's just there, okay? Which... Um, it, the, hair, the length of the hair is everywhere the same. And I'll show you that um, stitch again in a minute. If you want to make a longer hair feature, then you're going to have to um, have the hair that's um, the, the hair that um, you fasten on here at the back needs to be a certain length. And then you need much, much longer strands to come over from the top. That's like normal hair, like your hair, if you've got long hair. The top is much longer than the hair here in your neck. And um, so you need to make sure that these strands are longer than the ones that you fastened on underneath. So it takes a little bit of planning. In the book, it explains it to you really well. But we'll just show you another, um, another one of these um, stitches that you put on there. Sorry, my yarn just dropped. Well, I put it on the floor, didn't I? So I'm just going to use another strand of this. And um, when I've finished with this doll and I move on to the next one, that's when we draw the winner. So Emma, get ready uh, in a minute. Um, we'll we'll um, draw a winner. So we've got... Um, so if you've got your crochet hook, go into... It doesn't really matter where you go in, just catch a bit of that um, cap that you've crocheted earlier or knitted even and then sewn on the head pull your um, doubled up wool strand through it and then um, pull it again pull both strands through the loop that you've um, created and then pull it tight so that is how you do it it takes quite a lot of adding of, um, of strands of hair but I think it's definitely worth it and um, so this is the end of the competition now And um, I'll let Emma draw a winner while we are just having a little chat. So I hope this is um, inspiring. We um, we haven't covered at the moment how to sew on hair, which is what I've done here with um, these turmeric curls. Absolutely love this. What's in that hair? Oh, oh, there's a bit of leaf in that hair. She must have fallen on the ground at some point. There you go. 
So um, this is all sewn on that hair and it's just literally a tease water curls. So it's not, it's not yarn or anything like this. It's just literally individual strands of curls. Um, we do sell lots of different colors of curls, including rainbow. You could give your doll rainbow hair. That would be so nice. Um, and then also this one is done in the same technique. So this is all sewn on this hair. He's like a, he's like a, a wild child, this one very wild hair using the finger um, or pencil roving either names apply and um, and this one here he's also got sewn on hair but it's actually curls there you go that's um all that's all like really coarse curls there works really well for short curly hair um as they are short curls and then this one here is also sewn on so these are still the uh, ones that um, and here I've sewn it on so that there are longer loops at the front than um, at the back and um, today's winner I'm um, this is for the live stream on YouTube 23rd of February is Karen S well done Karen a 15 pound gift voucher will uh, drop through your email box if you could email us first and um, and let us know that you have won and then we'll, um, in return, we'll send you that voucher. And there's still a voucher up for grabs for the Thursday live stream repeat, which is the 25th of February at 7 p.m. over on Facebook. So if you've got a friend who might be interested in uh, different techniques of how to add hair to dolls, but it can also work for needle felting, then do give them the heads up that they haven't missed out on it. And remember, of course, with the um, the all of the tutorials that we are doing and the make-alongs and um, whatever else is staying on YouTube as well. So it can be visited anytime. So if, you, if you're not subscribed to our channel, be, please do that now. Tell, tell everybody who you know to subscribe too because we like having lots of subscribers. And um, I do want to tell you also about our weekend hug that there's still a couple of spaces available. This is actually the 14th of March is uh, Mother's Day. Go and tell your children that you want to go on a weekend hug with the makers or just treat yourself or maybe you will, um, you just you just need to do it anyway, Mother's Day or not. It's the 13th and 14th of March. We have had an absolute fantastic time during our um, January um, weekend hug. I know we still can't, you know, meet in in person and hug physically but we are this weekend hug is as close as you can possibly get to a hug and more because um we will send to you a, a really lovely big surprise box that has got all the makings for making a large lamb and this is not the small um lamb as we've done it in the in the our subscription box so if you think oh but i've done that already it is quite different different techniques different bits that we add into the equation and it is a large lamb um it's it's as large as that and you will be uh, using um you will be using silk clay for some of the techniques um and the the most important thing is if you can see beyond the make is actually that you will be having fun. We've had such a wonderful time with um, 11 fantastic um, ladies. It was all ladies. It doesn't have to be. Men are totally allowed. As I said, it's not a Mother's Day, necessarily a Mother's Day um, intentional uh, date. It just so happened. And um, we would love um, for you to join us and um, and share the the fun the the i know not everybody is you know very hasn't got necessarily got the money um to spend but i will i promise you every penny and this is the feedback we have had was absolutely worth it so if you if you can then come and join us um we have i don't want to say what's in the box because i'm giving all the surprises away but it will be more than what you expect and it's worth every penny you get luxury tools that you you need basically you don't even have to have tools to make um your own tools to make this lamb you get everything in the box to make it and it's it's, it's really nice stuff, the stuff that we use every day. And um, so you could treat a friend um, who's never needle felt it before. We totally welcome uh, beginners. Um, there is a... we. I mean, we we got on so well that we've already had a reunion in our in our um, weekend hug group. And we're going to have another reunion um, in... 
uh, 10 days time and I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to it as well. And I, I, I normally don't join into these socials because I'm always too busy, but I'm making time for this because it's for me. That's how good a time we've had and how our, our friendships have been forged. So if you've got any doubt, I, I think we might have a couple of people watching today who've been to the, to the hug. Um, they will tell you here as well. They've absolutely loved it and we've loved it and everybody's loved it. And we've made um, these lovely uh, lambs. Everybody had their own take of it. And of course, they always turn out differently from what um, you expect. And um, yeah, it's just been a really nice time to be had. Okay, um, let's have a look. Let's have a look what people are saying. Um, C, C. Saurus Rex says um, their doll was Boo Boo and um, er Erica says she's just she's she's waiting patiently for her book from Stuart which of course was featured on the very first of our doll making um, tutorials this month because it was making the mini me and remember you've still got time to enter the competition I'm seeing lovely lovely entries coming through so don't be shy just just posted on our Facebook page. Um, oh, and Sue says, perfect timing and working the project that needs hair. Hmm, maybe, maybe if you're a hairdresser and you're really bored, you could be making dolls hair. How about that? Um, congratulations, uh, says um, makers to, to Karen S. Excellent. Um, everybody's congratulating Karen now. Do you have a link for the rainbow? No doubt Emma will be putting um, the rainbow wool into the links now and I will just give you a little tiny, tiny little heads up. But all of these um, exciting, colourful um, tops are going to be in our sub club next month. <sighs> okay, right. Let's um, do some hair sewing and then that will be the last one that I can, um, I can share with you. All these dolls are going all over the place. Sorry dolls. Anywhere you want. Oh, dear. That one didn't. She didn't like it up there. It wasn't where she wanted to be. There you go. Okay. I've got to get, retrieve her and um, she doesn't mind being pulled by her hair. Okay. Sorry, doll. There you go. Sit up there. Um, if any of you have got any questions, fire away. Don't be shy. Right. There is. Um, oh, yeah, I think I dressed him half-heartedly because I um, didn't think it would be right to have a naked doll on YouTube. So um, he's got half a head of hair here at the moment and I will show you how to add it um, a little bit more. This is the shorter, um, this is the shorter hair and um, I've chosen to use some of this yarn here. You can use um, the yarn in one continuous length and for this, you need to, again, have, ideally have a color of um, thread that sort of is, is, is in, in um, sympathy with the actual color of the hair. But I'm going to use that same light yellow. Seems to be a good all-rounder. Um, if you can't find the color of the hair, then at least make it um, matching to the, to the color of the skin. So either, either uh, would be good but it would be better if it was the color of the hair. And um, again, all you need to do is you just secure your thread in um, on the area that you know will be covered by hair. So it's not dissimilar to what I did at the very beginning. Um, and, and then you um, sew the hair on. Now, if you're going to do this so that you've got a long hairdo, you have to sew it in rows and maybe I need to get the book out. Let's have a little quick quick look at the book because that's always um, interesting to look at as well. So the, the book is split into um, the different dolls and this is the bit that I'm looking for. So if you are making um, the hair and you want to have um, long hair, then you start normally at the bottom and you, um, you sew um, you sew a layer of hair on which is um, basically the first row of hair then you do that again with the second and you work your way up so that is basically how um, that hair is done I'm just wondering if there's ah here's a better one so this is the doll that I've showed you earlier which is um, Tomka doll 
So this is this is what your crocheted cup or your knitted cup will look like, and then you um, and then you sew it together. There you go, and then you can sew that on into place, and um, and then um, really really sew over it well, so that um, by the time you've done that, you have got a whole cover of hair and this just shows that um, there's lots and lots of stitches that's not what um, the stitches won't be visible on the outside to get consistent length of hair then you could make a template and you can um, cut lots of strands and then here it shows you um, this is this is not sewing it on I'm completely confusing you now but this is the crochet cup but uh, this is going back to the different lengths of hair so I have shorter hair at the bottom medium size in the middle and then long at the top okay that's not what I wanted to show you at all I want to show you how to sew on um, long hair and um, if you don't want to use yarn you can can use tops as well so if you imagine you're sewing uh, tops on you can just use long tops just bear in bear in mind that um, if you're giving this to a child to play if a child pulls on here they might pull little wispy ends off okay if a child pulls on on um, on here you can't pull that off okay that's the difference but if you're making a doll for an older child and you can tell them don't pull the hair then that's fine if you're making um, a doll for a small child you you don't want um, the hair to be pulled off if you're making a doll for no child whatsoever um, and it's it's maybe just a decorative item then that's fine you can just have the doll um, sitting on a shelf and nobody's touching it there are all sorts of reasons why people make dolls so so I'm going to um, start with the length of hair here at the base and I'm going to cut um, a couple of strands so I can show you how it works. So you might make yourself a, a cardboard template but I'm just using my fingers and uh, turning them into strands. Um, you don't you don't have to cut both ends you can just cut one end because if you imagine that you you lay that end here now and you sew across it the loops get caught in that in that um, in the wool that you are sewing on so this is how you would make um, one the beginning of long hair if you're sewing it on so I always go with a back stitch and I'm going back and forth and trapping the wool and if you um, imagine now if anybody pulls that hair all you do is you just catch the loop because you haven't caught you haven't um, cut that off and that's how you would go along the whole of the that um, bunch that you put down and then you put another layer next to it go over it several times because you really need to trap that hair in in the um, stitches that you're doing there and then you layer another um, and then you go, you know, there needs to be more on the side and then you go over the top. So if you want the hair to be the same length, then your strands need to be longer than the one below. Or if you have used the same template, then you have sort of a layered hair um, do rather than a, um, a, a, a long hair do. That's the only thing you need to be mindful and if you're doing this for a child to play then do go over it several times and if you imagine you did this with um, tops there's there's absolutely nothing wrong to do this with tops but it will be a different um, a different how can I say a different quality to it so you would also have your tops and put them down and have that loop at the top and then sew them on but um, as I said you pull this and it will come off you pull this and it doesn't okay so that is the difference basically so I hope that's given you um, some insight into making giving your um, dolls some hair and I don't think I've missed any it is it is all it's really quite straightforward it's all in the book as well so if you um, want to get a book um, on doll making this covers pretty much everything from dolls house dolls which we covered at the beginning of this week to um, slightly more grown-up dolls which are here at the back the um, the um, Tomka doll and um, there's a little a baby doll in there as well sorry I'm I'm looking at it you're not 
I should look at it that way. So yeah, so there's lots lots of information in there from um from different from different head styles to hairstyles to body styles to sizes. Um maybe some stories on on the different dolls and ideas of why why you might, might want to make a doll and um either for yourself or for somebody you know um yeah or maybe or maybe you just it's a it's a little project that you want to do um as a group together you can do it even virtually and just join and and do it and i think that's probably all i've got to say today what's the time oh Good timing. Right, I'm just going to double check that I haven't forgotten anything. I've talked about the weekend hug, so um, don't hesitate. If you've still got time to sign up. We will be posting those parcels with uh, DPD, so they, they are tracked and um, and re um, uh, um, get delivered quite quickly. If you're not within the UK mainland, then you definitely, definitely might not be. Um, yeah, it might just be a little bit too late for you now, but... Um, there's no harm in asking us. Do send us an email at info at the makers with two s's.co.uk. So it's basically like this one here, but have info at the makers in the front. And um, uh, today's price, we've done that. Um, and and Karen, if you are still watching, um, and you because you've won the prize, will you please make sure you email us? You might not you might not necessarily know, and we have no means of contacting you if you're watching us on YouTube because we don't know if we know you. So um, if you're still watching, then please get in touch by emailing us um, info at themakers.co.uk. Hopefully you're still there. If we don't hear from you, then we um, there might be somebody else who gets a surprise. So that's all from me today. Hang in there, everybody. Um, oh, I'll say it to you as much as to myself. We're hanging in there. We're waiting. Well, we're not just waiting. We're being proactive and keeping ourselves busy and sane. And um, and it will all come to an end. And when it does come to an end, I am, I'll be the first to be in touch with all of you lovely people to um, organize some kind of get together where we can actually physically hang out and maybe share a glass of wine or similar cup of tea, whatever. And um, I don't know, and and try and relearn all the social um, niceties that we've all forgotten in lockdown. <laughs> anyway, that's um, all from me today. See you on Thursday if you're watching it on Facebook and um, see you definitely next week, Monday for the week for the, for the new subscription box unwrapping. And um, it's going to be a good one. Be aware of dragons and rainbow fairies and Easter. Bye everybody.